Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we'll be talking about a very important concept in data science and machine learning called probability calibration. Now, I actually didn't learn this concept until kind of later on, and I'm hoping you learn it a little bit earlier than I did because it truly is important to making accurate predictions in your models. So you might see me jump on and off the screen so I'm not blocking anything on the slide. But let's start with the setup. Let's say you're the data scientist for some school district and you're training some model to predict whether a high school student will drop out of high school within one year. And just keep things simple for today. Let's say that you're going to have three features, their GPA, the number of days of school they've missed, and their sex. And let's just say you're going to train a random forest. So you put these three features into your random forest, and then it spits out a predicted probability, p hat, of whether or not the student will drop out of high school. And to put some concrete numbers, let's say we put in these features on the left, and on the right we get the output of 0.2 as our predicted probability. Now, how do we interpret this predicted probability? Well, it's a probability, so we would expect that of all the students who got a p hat or a predicted probability of around 0.2, just like we saw before. If we took all the students who got something around that, then 20% of them should actually go on to drop out of high school. That's what a predicted probability means, right? If a predicted probability is like 80%, then we'd expect that 80% of all students who got that predicted probability would go on to drop out. And in a graphical format, we're expecting this to look something like this. So basically, if the predicted probability is on the x-axis, this is what's output by the model. And the empirical probability is on the y-axis. Empirical probability means that we actually go to the data set and we look at all students who got this prediction and we basically calculate what percentage of them actually drop out. We would expect it to look like this dashed line. To put some concrete numbers, if the predicted probability was 20%, we'd expect 20% of those students to drop out. If the predicted probability was 80%, we would expect 80% of those class of students to drop out. Now, you might have seen this coming, but this is not actually what we see when you train a real classification model out in the wild. You're more likely to see something more chaotic like this. Now, let me try to emphasize why this is bad, because this is going to be the primary motivation for this entire video. If we have this random forest model we trained actually giving us this curve here, this blue curve, then we are consistently over-predicting overestimating the probability a student will drop out. For example, if we look at this dot here, it looks like it's around 70%. So we'd expect that 70% of those students would go on to drop out, but if we trace this on the y-axis, it's only around 5 to 10%. So this is not a calibrated model. So we need to perform some kind of probability calibration so that we can get these predicted probabilities to match up more closely with the ideal dashed gray line. And this, by the way, is called a reliability curve. It's so important that it gets its own name, which kind of blows my mind more why I was never exposed to it. But there you go, called a reliability curve or calibration curve sometimes. So the solution, how are we actually going to do this? The solution ends up not being super complex. We basically just need to introduce some kind of post function. So after we train our random forest, and by the way, I've been using random forest, but you can use whatever you want. After we train our initial model, we need to train a calibration layer that's going to go after it. And more specifically, more mathematically, we need to train some kind of model, specifically it's going to be a logistic regression, which is going to be able to predict the actual probability that a student will drop out, that's the p of y equals 1 you're seeing on the left side, based on the predicted probability output by the model. This is a little bit of a strange concept at first, so I want to try and cover it again. Basically, the model is going to output some kind of predicted probabilities, which we know are not correct if they look anything like this blue curve. So we're going to correct them or calibrate them by training a secondary logistic regression after our initial model, which is going to input these incorrect predicted probabilities and output hopefully more correct calibrated predicted probabilities. And so walking you through all the steps, this is basically what it would look like in a step-by-step -step process. First, you take your training set and you go ahead and fit a random forest or whatever classification model you're using. This is nothing new. Then on your testing set, which is a separate set of data that you've set aside, you're going to go ahead and train this calibration layer. You're going to train this logistic regression, which is going to take the predicted probabilities that are uh, judged from the model and fix them so they're actually predicting the thing they're meant to predict, which is the probability a student will drop out. Now, why do we need to introduce this testing set? Why can't we just run the secondary logistic regression on the training data itself? Well, you might have seen this, but this is going to introduce bias if we did that. Basically, if we take the model, which is generating these predicted probabilities, and we feed in the same data that we used to train the model, we're not going to get something generalizable. That's why we need to bring the test set in here. 
So the step two is that we go ahead and take the test set, run the model on it, get those predicted probabilities, and then fit a logistic regression to calibrate them. And the final step, basically to answer the question about is this calibration doing any good, we need a third set of data, which is the validation set. So we have three distinct sets of data here, which you can just kind of partition from your initial large data set, but the key is they have to be different sets of data. And the validation set will basically tell us whether the model is calibrated or not. And why can't we just check whether the model is calibrated or not on the test data? Same exact logic as before. We need to kind of keep the model distinct from the set of data we use to check whether the model is doing a good job. And so in a picture, it looks like this. After we've built the random forest and the calibration layer, we feed the new sample into the random forest. That gives us the uncalibrated probability, or p hat underscore u. We feed that into the calibration layer, or the logistic regression. And then we get the calibrated probability, p hat underscore c. And that's it. And so if we plot the new reliability curve, the blue curve was the non-calibrated one. And we're hoping, and usually what's the case, is that after we run it to the calibration layer, we get something more like the red curve. Still not perfect, but a heck of a lot better than the blue curve before. And now we have confidence that these probabilities that we have in our hands actually mean something in terms of what we think of probabilities as meaning. And now to close this video, let's hop over to the code and actually show you how to do this in the real world. All right, so we've got the code here. Um, in all honesty, I'll just go through it pretty quick because I think the main thing that I want you to take away is actually how this works behind the scenes and how to do it, what sets of data you need to consider. This is gonna be more just what's the code you need to run it, and of course, this will be available to you. I'll be using a different data set here. I'll be using a heart disease data set from UCI, which will be linked in the description below as well. But uh, basically, the first thing we do is we're gonna train a couple of different models, a random forest, a support vector classifier, and a naive Bayes classifier. And if we do that, then we go ahead and plot the histogram of the predicted probabilities on the training data and the testing data. The reason I plotted both of them for each of these models is I want you to see exactly how different the distributions can be. For example, look at the random forest. If we get the predicted probabilities of all of these samples in the training data, they kind of look like a binary distribution. Basically lots of things close to zero and lots of things close to one. But if we get those predicted probabilities on the test data, which again, the model has not been trained on and has not seen before, looks a lot more reasonable. So this is just further justification of why can't we just train the calibration layer on the original data because of these differences in distributions you see here and similar differences in some of the other ones as well. So now let's go ahead and plot the original reliability curves to convince ourselves that they're actually not a great idea. So the random forest reliability curve looks like this, um, not the worst, but also clearly not really going along with the ideal reliability curve. The support vector classifier curve looks a little more close to the line, but it has this other problem where we're not really covering anything near 0 to 0.2 or 0.8 to 1, so it's kind of this coverage problem. And the naive Bayes probably looks the worst of all. Clearly not calibrated, clearly cannot trust the probabilities that are coming out of these models. So then we go ahead and calibrate these. So this code, although it looks large, is just basically doing exactly what we talked about before. We are just training a logistic regression. Let me see if I can find that exact line. That happens in the beginning. So we train a logistic regression right here, which is our calibration layer. And now if we plot the original reliability curves versus the calibrated reliability curves, they're gonna look a lot better. For example, this is the random forest. So the orange is the new reliability curve, and although it's not perfect, it looks a lot smoother and a lot better than the random forest reliability curve from before. Support vector classifier looks a little bit worse, especially around the extremes, but we can explain that because there wasn't really any data on the extremes for us to use, so it's not gonna do as well, but still it's doing better than the support vector classifier original. And the naive Bayes curve all over the place, it's not even covering anything in the middle here, but we see the calibrated curve is doing a lot better. So now how do we actually use this? It's just a three-step process. So the first thing we do is get the base model. So here I've chosen to get the random forest classifier, store that in this variable CLF. Then the next thing we get the calibration layer for the random forest, store that in this variable called LR for logistic regression. And then we go ahead and just take a new sample. So this is just some feature vector that I just made up. We go ahead and get the uncalibrated probability. So which is just equivalent to saying random forest classifier dot predict probability on this new sample and that uncalibrated probability is 0.14. So if we didn't do any calibration, we would naively think that, oh, this sample has a 14% chance of having heart disease, which is the target variable here. But we know better. We go ahead and run this uncalibrated probability, put them right here. 
we put them in the logistic regression, which is the calibration layer, and we find the true, more accurate calibrated probability for this person having heart disease is actually 25%. And when you put it in this kind of framework where you're trying to predict if someone has heart disease or not, it's probably a good idea to calibrate. You want to know whether it's a 14% chance or 25% chance. That's kind of a big gap. So that's it. Hopefully you learned about probability calibration in this video. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.